you're going to learn from somebody who's absolutely blazing his trail to success in the entrepreneur space, in the digital space, and most importantly, in the exposure space. So I have digital entrepreneur here, Brendan. Going into 2024, if people really want something different, they got to do different things. Mm. If you really want your business to grow, you got to do different things with your business. And, and a lot of the times, people are more relaxed. Mm. Like, I'm going to just hope something happens or they may do something different for a small amount of time. Yeah, so for, sure. for all businesses, if you're watching this right now, it doesn't matter what, you, what, you, what, what industry you're in. The main thing that you need to do is... Welcome to another episode here at the Trailblazers Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Ortega, and we are committed to creating content that inspires, motivates, and empowers you as an entrepreneur so you could continue to blaze your own trail to success. And in today's episode, you're going to learn from somebody who's absolutely blazing his trail to success in the entrepreneur space, in the digital space, and most importantly, in the exposure space. I don't know. I mean, you're going to have to watch this whole episode to find out what I mean by, ex by, by exposure, but this episode, it's about to go down so i have digital entrepreneur here brendan what's up man hey man i'm excited to be here bro yeah you man know, welcome I, to the uh, show yeah i'm super excited to be here um i've noticed you online as well yeah so um you know i had to reach out i uh definitely was uh looking at obviously episodes and, and yeah, see how, yeah. how how you guys are rolling out um and you're in vegas i'm in la so it only made sense so i'm super excited to be here meeting yeah, man. you and the team and, and getting this episode done yeah, man, bro, you uh, you got that Kanye vibe with the ski mask on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the whole point, bro, like, like I, you know, uh, I think I told you off camera, I'm going on tour. Yeah. You know, and, and I feel like, uh, and, 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 and this is with everyone, I feel like whatever you do, you got to, like, analyze, like, you, you, you really got to see who your competition is. Right. And not necessarily, like, you have to aim for them or anything like that. But you got to see what they're doing. You need to do something differently, mm, you know? That's a bar. Um, so what I'm saying is, like, in, in the space that I'm in with one of my businesses, which is podcast guesting, right? Mm -hmm. What I realized, there are a lot of people that can get you on a podcast. But there's not a lot of people that can help you with the back end. Mm -hmm. So what we do is on the back end, we'll get you that exposure. But now on the back end, we can help you turn that exposure into leads and data back into your business. So you can grow your email list, your text message list. You can close more deals. You, mm -hmm. you can make more revenue. Anyone can get you on the show. Right. You know what I'm saying? So... This whole thing, even 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 with the mass, is like all right. On the front side, it's exposure, mm. right? So what what are, what are people doing right now? They're probably tuning more in because I have this on. Facts. They don't know who I am. Yeah. They can't see my face. They just see the mask. They see the glasses. Mm. By the way, these are the Meta Ray Bands. Yeah, man, I'm jealous. I'm Look recording at that. right Look now. We that, gotta get man. you a pair ASAP. Right? Yeah. So the whole thing is this: going into 2024, if people really want something different, they gotta do different things. Mm. If you really want your business to grow. You got to do different things in your business. And, and a lot of the times, people are more relaxed. Mm. Like, I'm going to just hope something happens or they may do something different for a small amount of time. What we're, what we're doing this whole this whole year, even with this tour that mm. I have called the Audience Growth Tour, we're pushing the standards of showing people that they need to do more to get in front of more people. Mm. Right? You got to shake it up a little bit, right? So you got to you gotta use a mix of, I'm going to see what my competition is doing. I'm going to do something different. And even if I don't have a budget, I'm still going to put my myself and my business in front of yeah, yeah. more of my potential clients and customers so I could do more business. It's yeah. really just math at the end yeah, of the yeah. day. No, I love that, right? man. I love that. Right? So yeah. you can make your product and service better, yeah. of course, but that's not necessarily, necessarily going to get you more clients. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I love that, man. I love you're coming in here different. You're yeah. definitely like caught me off guard with mm -hmm. the ski mask and meta glasses but one of my philosophies in business if, is if you do what they won't do won't think of doing and will never do you always rise above like mm -hmm. you're you're like man i'm what, what's my competition doing i'm gonna do this 100 percent. and just wearing this like even a clip from this would probably go insanely viral it's because gonna, it be catches different. the attention 100 percent, right yeah. they're like what's going on what's yeah. he saying and they're going to tune in. And, and most likely, you know, this is probably going to be one of the episodes that actually gets a lot of, you know, a lot more views. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On a podcast. Not even necessarily about me being here. It's about the message that's going out visually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And it's the same thing with the OnlyFans girls. You know what I'm saying? Like, people are captivated, obviously, by sex and, and, and you know, violence and, and, and just activity. But it's the visual stimulation that, that captures people and keeps their attention. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you know, hey, I can subscribe or... I could pay a little bit of this, but I know what I'm going to get, which mm. is that visual stimulation. That's what keep people locked in. Mm. So that's what people need to do for their businesses. 
So you might not necessarily be someone that's hella creative. However, you could be like Gary Vee was back in the day when he had the wine channel. Mm. You can go a little bit deeper on your products and services and just let people know what's going on. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like even good. this, this is an amazing jacket that hey, you know you got gifted plug. me with. You know what I'm Let's saying? Let's go. You see what's going on, right? This is fire right here. So just imagine if there's a brand watching this right now. They have a brand. You know, they they make products and services. What if they just told the story of this coat? Mm. You know, what inspired it? You know, uh, what about the ink? You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, what, 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 what about the weight of the cotton? Where right. did it come from? You right. know what I'm saying? How do you zip it on? How do you zip it off? Yeah. Like, telling those type of stories is going to end up in doing more sales versus another clothing company who's not doing that. Right. No, that's you know good. what I mean? Yeah, So for, sure. for all businesses, if you're watching this right now, it doesn't matter what, you, what, you, what, what industry you're in. The main thing that you need to do is get a YouTube channel, right? And you need to create some type of type, some type of discipline that's going to allow you to create. Mm -hmm. If you're not somebody that can get in front of the camera, either get a spokesperson or someone on your team to do it, and just start by talking about what you do a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people, they they have the misconception of, I did it, right. and, and I posted today, I'm good. Yeah. Right? Because they don't want to bother people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. oh... Oh, you know, I sent out a message. I sent out an email. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to send out too many emails. I'm right. going to send out one today or one this week. But it's like, that's not going to get the intention. Right. So you said YouTube channel. But before you said that, you said the discipline to create. Like, yeah. what are some disciplines that you have for yourself that keeps you to keeps you consistently creating? 100%. So I read a lot, bro. So okay. I do I do what I call 2020. So it's like 20, uh, 20 minutes of an audio book mm. and 20 minutes of a, of a physical book. So you do both. So 40 I do minutes both. Total? Yeah, 40 minutes. Okay. Um, and what that does is stimulates my mind. But I do it on subjects that I want to learn. So right now, I'm heavy, in, I'm heavy on lead generation. Okay. And business. So you read uh, Alex Hormozzi's book, I'm assuming? Yeah, I read that. I, okay. I read that. Um, and I did an audio book like three times. Okay. So, I'm, so right now, I'm big on lead gen and then um, uh, mergers and acquisitions. Okay. Because that's like where I'm moving into now. Like acquiring businesses, yeah, and, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. So that allows me to get. So basically, I'm feeding my subconscious. And okay. what what does your subconscious do? It feeds your conscious. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I keep pouring in every single day. And the thing what people need to understand is sometimes when you pour in, you don't get it back right away. Facts. You the know what I'm saying? The return isn't quick. The return isn't necessarily quick. Yeah. But if you let, okay, let's say. You you read a book today, or you did an audio book today. Mm. But so, like, you know, let's say the rest of the day you got to hang out with the family. Maybe right. take your girl out. Right. Maybe hanging out with the kids. Maybe you going hooping. Something might come later. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or it might be the next day. Mm. You, 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 um, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's the it, it's that activity that continue to stimulate and growing your mindset because once you put stuff in here, then this stuff can start doing what it does. Mm. You're not necessarily in control of your mind. You can be if you practice, but generally the mind <laughs> controls everything else. Facts, right? And if you're not, if you're not um, in control of your patterns, in control of your paradigm, mm. in control of the movements, like you're gonna think you're making decisions, but it's really your paradigm making decisions for you. Facts, you know what I mean? So when I talk about uh, creating, and have a discipline to create. You first have to have the discipline to pour into yourself so you can have something to create from. Yeah, it's like pouring good. from an empty well. Yeah. You can't do it, right? You can't drink if there's no more water in the glass. Facts. There's nothing there. So you have to constantly put things in, right? And then as you're putting things in, then you can put things out. Yeah, that's good. So man. so discipline could be obviously read, YouTube. Blix is a fire app. If y'all don't know about Blix, Blix basically summarizes books in anywhere from eleven to twenty minutes. Wow. So you could so you can yeah. download Blix. Um, um we could put a link down low sure. below for that. Um well Blix will give you 10, 15 minutes of a book that you want to read. I might take you eight hours, but it'll just summarize every mm. chapter. That might be enough to kind of get you, yeah. get so you going. What you're saying here is in order to create content or mm. just to be more progressive in business and online, you're saying the fundamentals of discipline, meaning learning, is essential to unlock creativity right because that's that's kind yeah. of what i'm hearing here yeah, yeah. Huh, so you're 100%. you're doing these disciplines you're reading you're constantly learning reading, how writing, is that yeah affected the way you produce content 100 percent. so now you have more input right you have more things pouring into yourself yeah now you have to have the act of you know it would be like let's talk about basketball again it would be okay 
Now I've been in the gym. Mm. I've been putting the weights in. I've been, you know, reading tape, watching tape, whatever. Now I need to put up the shots. Now mm. I need to practice the moves a thousand times or whatever the case may be. So now we're talking about creating short form content, creating long form content. Mm-hmm. You know, and that might just be where you talking about your business, talking about your products and services, talking about your story, which is which is essential, which is important because, you know, why would I want to work with you versus the next person? But if I can re- relate to you, if I right. understand your story, that's right. going to pull me in a little bit, a little yeah. bit more. So that's just the start. And then not expecting that you have to make a Picasso in the beginning. And I think that trips, trips people up a lot, mm. right? They feel like they got to be perfect. If it ain't perfect, I can't put it out. But you can never start your business like that. Facts. You know, it's just people have this fallacy around when it comes to marketing or content creation or anything other than what they used to, they think it has to be yeah, has a magic to look a pill. Way, it has to yeah. be some different way. Um, but it's literally exactly how they started it. You just put it into a different yeah. a different category. Yeah, that's good, man. And I could test to that because, like, <clears throat> recently I had my Instagram hacked. And, and just starting over, I have all these ideas where I want to <clears throat> produce better content. Mm. But the reality is I have to start. And so just I just started to produce content on the fly yeah. to the degree of what I think should be created. But I know over time things will get better. And so I, you've built a pretty big social media presence. How like how has the process and progress been for you? Like you creating content today versus you when you started, you know, whenever you started. Like how has that process been? I think uh, back then I was looking for the content. Yeah. Instead of like being the content, like right now I'm the content. Mm, You're the content. We're we're the content right now. You're the content. Yeah. And it's like if you really look at everything that's going on in your life right now, you can you can get in tune with it and relate it to whatever you do. That's good. And I think once you do that, it becomes a little bit easier. Is that more so for personal brands or like if someone if someone doesn't have a personal brand but they have a business brand, like? How like what's the difference between the two? Right now you gotta have you gotta have a personal brand, bro. So it's non negotiable. It's non negotiable. Twenty twenty four. Why do you feel like that's more strategic? Because that's how people are buying, bro. They're not buying Pepsi. You know what I'm saying? Now Pepsi and Coca Cola, these brands are so powerful. It's different for them. It's different. different They're just they're just basically. But like Logan Paul and Prime. Hundred percent. No one's buying Prime. No one's buying Prime without Logan Paul. Yeah. No one's buying Feasibles without without Mr. Beast. Beast. Yeah, it's a bar. You know what I'm saying? So building a person, building a personal brand, that's like printing printing money. You know what I'm saying? Like now these guys that we just mentioned, they could go to any products and services and they can monetize it because yeah. they're their personal brand. Yeah. They had a the relationship, they got the following, they got the subs. They well, got, how does they someone like equity? Like how does someone if someone doesn't have a personal brand, let's yeah. just say like someone has a clothing brand mm-hmm. and they're kind of popping on social media, but they don't have yeah. a personal brand. Like what do you recommend them do today to start one? You gotta create. And you also have to think about just because you want a personal brand does not mean you're going to get it right away. Yeah. The problem is people want things fast. Yeah. You don't need things fast. You just need things definite. Mm. So what does that mean? That that means if you want a personal brand or if you want anything, it's there for you. Matter of fact, it's already out there. God's, uh, God already set it for you. Yeah. Because it's your vision. It's what yeah. you see. All you got to do is reverse engineer it. You'll get the result. And how do you reverse engineer a personal brand? Well, what I look is what what, what I look for is okay. Where do you want to be uh, perceived at? Like, okay. where do you want people to to um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What do you where do you where do you want them to digest you at? Is okay. it YouTube, Instagram, TikTok? Right. And does it matter? Like, like do you recommend focusing on one social channel than the other, or being omnipresent? I feel like you need to be on YouTube because it's a long play. Okay, it's searchable. Your long form content will get digested there because that's what that's what it's for. But I also feel like you need to be on Instagram or TikTok, whichever one you want. But Instagram is more like your ID. It's more mm. like your business card. Okay. Because how many times have you met somebody new? You're like, yo, what's your Instagram? Yeah, all people, the time. people ain't even asking for numbers yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. What's they your ask ID for Instagram. Right? Yeah. So so if you're on Instagram, what's gonna happen is people are gonna say, Okay, this person's real. Right? Mm. That's even how I found you. I didn't find you on YouTube yet. I found you on yeah, Instagram, right? you, yeah. But if I want to spend more time with you, if I want to go down the ladder, if I want to actually, you know, consume more of the podcast, right? I need to now switch the platforms. I know I'm going to spend at least 20 minutes on YouTube. Yeah. You know, and if something's fire, I'm going to just start digesting, you know, going down a rabbit hole of content. So I think the easiest way to start is to document. Mm. So what did I do today? I woke up, you know, did my thing. 
Turn the camera on. Listen, I'm about to go to uh, Vegas. Y'all gonna come with me? So you Y'all vlog gonna... your whole day? I, vlo I vlog today. Dang. You know what I'm saying? I vlog today. Um, I thought that died like a few years ago. Is that still relevant? That's what I think. I think it's coming back. Is it? I think it's coming back, bro. And the reason why I think... Shout out to Casey Nastat. He's, he's one of the first people uh, that one of my friends had me watch 2018 about vlogging. Mm. So back then, I didn't have the insight that I have now. So I was like, why would someone want to know yeah. about me? Right. They don't even know me. Right. So I vlogged a little bit, and then I, then I died down. Yeah. But what I realized is now looking back is that they they want to know me because if I have a product of service out there as we're moving forward, mm. that's the only thing that's important. You can hear like Alex Armosi, what did he do? He built he built Jim Launch and in, in, in um acquisition.com. Right. But then he's now he's back on a personal brand. He didn't even have a personal brand when he was doing those businesses. Facts. But he realizes how important that is. What can a personal brand do? It allows people to spend more time with you without them having to actually spend time with you. Mm. I could go spend seven hours with Alex Armosi right now on YouTube. And then I'm like, I feel like I know him. Right. I want right. to take my business to acquisition.com and see if he can invest into my mm -hmm. business. Right? Um, he doesn't have gym launch anymore. But if he did, I would want to work with him to get my gym launched. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you know what I mean? Or at least, oh, he got books. Spend time with him. Okay, I can read the gym launch book. I can read a hundred a hundred million dollar offers. I can mm -hmm. read a hundred million uh, leads, you know. Or I could just go there to learn. Right now, one of my favorite people is Cody Sanchez. I feel like I know Cody, mm -hmm. right? Because she's talking about businesses. I learned uh, literally a business I launched last week is because she inspired me. Wow! Off of the personal brand, and you never even spoke to the dude. It's just, now, it's yeah, just well, like video. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it, it, it's a she. Oh my yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, but no, no. I have not spoken to her. Okay. You know what I'm saying okay. at all. But that's what you can do. Yeah, the power of personal brand is is like you is it, it, it's like you printing money, bro. Yeah, and I think people don't realize how powerful these platforms are. You can literally have an idea, you can create something today, mm -hmm. and you can put it out. Yeah, that's digital real estate. It's currency. Yeah. Now I I could put something out right now. You can listen to it or watch it six months from now. Right, and now you can do an action because may I had a call to action at the end, may I had a commercial. Mm -hmm. You know, you could discover something that I created six months ago. It's like it's like what books are, right? We yeah. can go back twenty years, thirty yeah. years, grab a book, read it right now in a moment. But that book was written two, three decades ago, yeah. whatever the case may be. Yeah. So, if you really look at the way that your business is is uh, put together right now, yeah, and start documenting. You know, in a sense, be vulnerable, capture real moments, but then let people know, hey, listen, I got a dry cleaners. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got, I got a, you know, a car wash business. I got this, I got that. You're gonna create consumers from that. Yeah. Right. And then a personal brand allows you to do other things because yeah. you're able to now diversify. You know, the things that you can get into, digital products. Yeah, yeah. JVs. Yeah, man. This all sounds super exciting. I feel yeah. like. The talk of personal branding, it, it is really important, especially with, like, social media just growing at the rate it's growing. Like, you're right. Like, no one buys Pepsi or, I mean, Pepsi's big, but no one buys Feasibles without Mr. Beast. At all. And so with everyone that's listening here, I know I have a lot of people tapped in who are entrepreneurs, who have businesses, um, and also who have personal brands. But, like, if they're – let's just say someone has one, but they're stuck. Yeah. And, like, man, this isn't growing. They got a business or they got personal brand? Both. Okay. Like, let's just say there's someone who has a business successful, has a personal brand, but they're stuck. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how to, you know, how to keep up with trends and how to keep up with stuff. Like, they're stuck. Yeah. What would you say to that person that's stuck? Well, if that person has some budget, then I will hire someone. I will hire a good creative director, or I hire I will hire a good um, social media manager. Okay. Right. Someone that can start looking at trends for you. That that can start digesting. And do you feel like trends are there? important to like? keep up to date with your strategy well not necessarily trends in the sense of you got to be dancing yeah, yeah i'm just talking about what like what type dancing. of content is working yeah you know what i'm saying yeah because let's say your message right the way that you're saying it but the way that you put it out mm. isn't working so what you're saying is working but the perspective and what you're putting it out isn't, isn't working, working yeah. right but but maybe you can go out and be like okay cool i understand that oh all right there's something going on with people sitting on like um, bricks. Okay. So I'm gonna say my same message, but I'm gonna sit on some bricks because that's moving right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
like or or a certain sound. Well, are you referring to like trends at scale or trends in the niche? Because I know that's like two different things, right? I'm saying I'm saying you gotta you gotta survey you gotta survey your category. Okay. I think one of the easiest things is like you could just see right now like uh, some of the content that I've created. I think maybe a week or two ago, I said, listen, whatever industry you're in. Think about the two or three competitors right now. Go on mm. YouTube, put their names in, see if they see if any content pops up. It is the generally be, the no best content way to popping do, up. Like go to YouTube to find who's doing. Yeah, I will go to YouTube and Instagram, obviously. Okay. So I think it's important to know who's in your industry, mm. like who are who who. Let's not even call them competitors, but who's also in a space doing yeah. something similar to what you do. Yeah, but doing it right. Yeah, right. but do they have content? Or do they have a personal brand? If they if they don't have content or don't have a personal brand, that means that's a blue ocean for you. Mm. That's a blue ocean in that category, right? So if you're stuck, what I would do is I would either if you got your own time, I would do some research. If you don't have time, I would hire a social media manager, I hire a creative director that can start doing some stuff for you. And just like anything, like let's go back to basketball. I work on different moves. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What's your crossover like? How many different versions of a crossover can you can you do? Can you drill with that left hand? Can you, can you jump off the left foot? I would I would start practicing, you know. Like right now, I'm I, I'm here with the energy, right? Yeah. Right. You don't yeah. you don't have to prep me for anything. I got a ski mask on. I thought about this, like mm. you know what I'm saying. So it's like, as you're doing more of these movements, as you practice and as you're creating more, you're gonna get more comfortable, right? You're gonna start saying, oh, okay, Alex Armosi's doing this, or you know Russell Br- Ru- Ru- Russell Brunson's doing this, mm-hmm. or uh, Grant Cardone's doing this. Okay. What what can I take from these guys? These are some of the biggest guys out there. Mm. So if they're doing this, but my competition ain't, I guess I'm going to see what they got going yeah, on. Yeah. Or I'm going to do this same talking head video for 20 videos and just just see the data and see the response. Yeah. So do you recommend like sticking to one strategy and exhaust it or like trying everything that you see? Because there's a lot of people who have the ability to create content endlessly. Like, mm-hmm. for example, like myself here. But, like, I'm not, like, in my mind, I'm like, why don't I stick with one strategy, exhaust it, and move on to the next if that doesn't work? Like, do you recommend that? or? Well, it depends on, like, how many reps you're doing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're doing, I don't know what you got going on, right? Yeah. But if you're doing two or three videos a week, the frequency is not fast enough for you to get for you to so get the data a, fast what's enough. a good frequency to figure out what lane to stick with when it when to it comes me, to content to me i feel like you should create you should either create daily so you can build up the the habit of it or you should have one or two days a week where you just go in 2 or 3 hours and just create sometimes the the act of creating will put you in that flow state yeah, okay you know what i'm saying now when it comes to putting your stuff out if you create enough content you can put your stuff out daily like once a day, like what do you recommend? Oh, so I, I personally put out six pieces of content a day. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it six of six pieces of content on the same channel? Like six so, on Instagram, so it's six five, on. So it's uh five on on all the um short 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 form con- okay. uh, platforms. So we talking about Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and it's it's an additional one on Instagram that's an overnight post, okay. which we can also talk about, which which is a, a missed opportunity for a lot of people. Overnight post. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah overnight post. Um, but when it comes to YouTube right now, I'm in an ex- I'm, I'm experimenting on YouTube where I'm putting out uh, content every other day. Okay. Because I because I have enough long form content right now, so I've never done that before. So I'm I'm doing two months of that to see what the data I get okay. back from that, and then I'm gonna decide from there. So you're saying five short form? Is that the, like the same five on each platform? Yeah, or is so it different I, so, per platform? So Instagram would be like my number one. Okay. And then I use the other ones to redistribute. And I'm, okay. not, I'm not advocating that everyone needs to do this. Yeah. You just start with one. Once you get a cadence, once you get a flow, get a cadence, then you can move on. Because it's just like the news, right? If if there was a, okay, let's say, what, what, what's the team here? Vegas Knights? Yeah, that, yeah, that Knights. Team? Okay. yeah, yeah. So let's say the Knights won championship, right? But let's say one channel was only one is the only one channel that was covering it, mm. right? Then they redistributed it on other channels, so you could find out the same information from other yeah, channels. I think that's how it works too. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's the same thing with your content. You don't have to create new pieces of content for the same thing that you just talked about. Yeah. But you also have to have the you know I'll use discipline again. 
to repurpose. Yeah, because you know it has to be formatted maybe differently. It may have to be formatted. Yeah. Your caption may have to be, be be different or something like that. That's why I say start with one. Yeah. Because you might not have a budget. We're talking about Grant Cardone, Alex or Mosey. Yeah, they have big Brunson. budgets. They got big budgets, <laughs> yeah. and, and they're not doing the posting. Yeah. Maybe Alex or Mosey might be, you know what I'm saying, because, he, you know what I'm saying, he's somebody that kind of like, he'll get his hands dirty yeah. and stuff like that. He feels more organic. Yeah, he feels more organic. Yeah. However, they have teams. So now the teams are planning the content out. Yeah. For so sure. everyone's not going to start like that. Yeah. Right. So you might just be like, all right, cool. I'm going to do Instagram and I'm going to do YouTube or Instagram and TikTok. Or TikTok and for and YouTube, YouTube, like, for example, obviously I'm building a podcast yeah. here. Like, do you recommend like YouTube content being like the longer form content that's being on Instagram or like what's a YouTube strategy that's working for you? So I think it depends, man. Like if right now you have a podcast. Yeah. And the podcast is your long form, then I would just focus on the just podcast focus on that. and then okay. have another channel for clips. Okay, so two two channels? Yeah, because I'm so I'm in a I'm in a um uh a YouTube mastermind and what they're saying is I'm gonna write this down. I'm gonna okay. forget. <laughs> so I'm yeah. in a YouTube mastermind right now. Two channels. So what I'm what I'm hearing is that even though clips do well, channel. clips clips do well, what it does is it re, it reduces your view duration on long form content. Okay. If they're both on the same platform. Really? Yeah. Oh, because shoot. I can watch 10 clips. That's 10 minutes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But your average view duration on one podcast might only be 10 minutes. You know what I'm So are you, are you saying the difference between shorts and long form, like one channel just for shorts? Mm-hmm. And not have no long form on it? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I never heard that before. Yeah. You could just, again, test it. And that's Dang. two channels. Because look at it like this. But it's the same channel, though. Like Trailblazers, Shorts, Trailblazers, Yeah, it's going to be like Trailblazers, Clips. You know, so and just Trailblazers. So Dang. The Trailblazers, Clips. Smart. What happens is now you got two channels. Yeah. It's kind of like ESPN and ESPN2. <laughs> Dang, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's interesting. So so Trailblazers channel, all long form all content. All long form. You can even put down segments, which is basically like a short form, long form. So, so for regular Trailblazer, and this is what I do in my own podcast. So let's say a regular Trailblazer is 45 minutes or yeah. an hour. Yeah, yeah. You could take two or three clips from that, like juicy pieces. So we talked about YouTube. We talked about, um, you know, exposure a little bit. So let's say you did five minute, a five-minute clip on exposure, a six-minute clip on YouTube. But it won't be a short. It'll be like an actual like a clip, upload. Like a, yeah. So it's a okay. long form with a short form. Got it. Right? Got it, so okay. now you have the full episode. Yeah. But then you have two additional uploads that, wow. are, uh, that are also long form pieces of content. But they're just shorter. So Dang. you got you got the sixty minute long form, which is which is the long form. Right. You got an eight minute that's just on exposure because maybe we went crazy on that topic. You got another six minute that Dang. we went talking about. That's actually YouTube. pretty smart. Now you got three long forms for that for that big piece of content, which gives you additional posts on YouTube. Yeah. And additional ways that people will watch the long form because after I watch the six minutes, I'm like, yeah, this is kind of spicy. Let me watch the whole thing. Dang. Then on your other channel, it's just shorts. All Shorts. Dang. All shorts. Because that gets this me is, pretty excited to this try is where that I want, out. That's what I'm saying. So this is where I want to go when I want to watch Tra- Trailblazer shorts. So what you're saying, I'm going to write this down. So what you're saying is for the long form, you have the long form, and then you have like eight, five to eight minutes yeah. of that long form? Yeah, I call them I call them segments. Segments. Man. Yeah. Minutes. So like at Podshop, which we could talk about, but Podshop, when we edit a, a podcast for a client, a deliverable consists of uh, a video long form, okay. you know, if they got commercials, you know, intro, outro, whatever, uh, audio long form, one segment, so something that might be eight to ten minutes, yeah, and then four clips. That's one deliverable for that one podcast. Wow. Right? So you can do the exact same thing, but you can even get more segments or even more clips. You, you know what I'm saying? It just gives you yeah. more upload. And does that, like... Is it really like a numbers game when it comes to like going viral on whatever platform? Like you have to post a whole bunch. That's not necessarily to... a numbers game. It's more like strategy. Okay. Right. So me with the ski mask on, that's gonna give this this podcast episode yeah. an opportunity to do something different than the other ones because the strategic yeah. positioning is okay. Who's behind the mask? Would that be like a strategy you That's recommend strategy. to promote this? Like, is it Kanye or who is it? Like, yeah. would, would that like be you like you gotta have a catchy title? Yeah, put this on as a thumbnail. Yeah, and see what happens. You, you know what I'm saying? 
Uh, so have you, you done anything like this in the past? And it like no, nah, I'm doing off? this my whole tour. Oh like, wow! Like this is gonna be I'm gonna brand these, bro. Like I didn't oh, get so you're, to do you're today. wearing the ski mask for the whole tour. My whole tour. That's yeah, yeah. Like all crazy. 2024, I'm gonna be experimenting with different like different because now what, what what can people do with this? Who's this? Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Who's like, this? Like who's behind this? What's going on? Like, do you remember um, back in the day, uh, musicians like uh, hip hop? I think um, Mike Jones did it. Paul Wall did it. They had like, 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 uh, basically like, what's my name campaigns. Yeah, yeah. Like Mike Jones even put his number out there. Yeah, which was crazy back in the day. Like yeah. he put his number. I could call him right now. So it's the same thing. It's like we're putting out marketing that's basically is like it's it's calling them to engage and to react. Mm. So you post this in the comments. It can be like, who's this? Find is you. You could post it, not put my at. They're gonna be like, "What's his at?" Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or if that's you do put the at, they're gonna come to the page. You, you know, you know what I'm saying? So that's why it's so important for for you to think about strategy. Yes, you need volume, but you also need strategy. Mm. You need you need them both. You you know what I'm saying? You need volume. Strategy, strategy. comes before the volume, right? Yeah, strategy comes before the volume. Yeah. But if you don't have strategy, put enough volume out there because that's gonna allow you to now get some strategy. Cause you're gonna see what's working, what's not working. Yeah, and that, and that's why a lot of entrepreneurs aren't making more money because they don't, they're not doing enough. It's like mm. the law of inertia, right? The law of inertia basically states that you got to put out enough energy to get a result. Mm -hmm. So if there if there's a rock and we're pushing it up a hill, all right, the rock won't move unless we put enough energy behind that to get it to move. That's so good, right? Yeah. So you can't do that in business. You can't you can't get any more clients. If you don't have any any uh, activity to get clients, so most businesses don't. They rely on word of mouth. They rely on referrals, and that, and that's just that's it. You can ask next ne next networking event you go to. Mm -hmm. This is what y'all watching right now. Ask a couple of people. Ask like five or ten people. Hey, how's your business going? Quick question for you. How, how do you normally get clients? You know, word of mouth. Word of mouth. <laughs> yeah. That's what they're gonna say. They, yeah. There's no plan. There's no strategy for them yeah. to get clients. It doesn't exist. So that's what you need. And maybe you don't have budget. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you're not, you know, like comfortable with marketing or maybe you don't do marketing. That's fine. But you need to do something enough to see if it's working. Yeah. And just turning the lights on and opening it up ain't getting you clients. Yeah. You know, facts. there's a lot of businesses that we go to that we love. It could be a bakery, dry cleaners, you know, car wash or whatever case may be. And you're like, yo, how do they even, how do they say you open? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. every time I come here, it's like one person or just me. And it's like, <laughs> how they, how they like doing that. it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you could solve that problem, that's an opportunity for you or anyone. You could be the person that helps them get clients. That's Now you have a another offer. Yeah. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? So that's where a lot of uh, businesses are struggling because they're not getting more people to know about who they are. It's yeah. not about them improving their thing. Yeah. It's about... More people knowing that they do the thing. Yeah, no, that's good, man. I, and I appreciate you breaking this down because there's so many people like stuck, like, man, like, how do I get more clients? And I feel that word of mouth is relative to social media because yeah. if you build your brand right, it is a word of mouth. It's, it's just a completely different form than traditional word of mouth. But, you know, you could continue to get business through word of mouth if you do your social media right. No, 100%. Yeah. And then you also, like, preach about podcasts. Obviously, like, I'm a big yeah. podcast advocate as well um, from a host perspective. Mm -hmm. But you always talk about get on other people's podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how has that been effective for some of, you know, some people you work with? Like, how is it getting on more podcasts going to build your brand? So it's more platforms, man. So. It's like this. I'm on your I'm on your podcast right now, right? right. So you're going to be introducing me to your audience, right? So I have a strategy called Five Two W, and you could do it. You, people can literally do it for free. It's like one podcast a week for 52 weeks, which is a calendar year. That's 52 different platforms that yeah. you can get your your brand, your business. You can get your messaging out in front of. And if they do the legwork and research these different shows, you can even do it. You don't even have to leave your house. You can do it all virtual shows. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But if you have 30 to 60 minutes that you, can, that you can invest in your business and get your messaging out there every single week, more people are going to find and discover you. Yeah. Now, if you couple that with if you have a podcast of your own, if you couple that with I'm making content, if you couple that with I'm going live every day, you know what I'm saying? Like these are all different additional ways for you to get the messaging out there, right? But 
if you're someone that, you know, maybe you get anxious or you're not really sure how to start that conversation, mm. if I go on your show, the host is going to have all the questions. Yeah. I know what I can do. Yeah. So you're going to ask me the questions or she's going to ask the questions or whatever. You're just maybe, delivering. And I'm going to just deliver. Yeah. So you have to know what you do, how you help people, your whole messaging and all of that. Right? Once you get that down, you just get in on these different couches and all these different platforms and all these different virtual or in-person podcasts. It's, yeah. it's going to be very easy for you to talk about what you do. And then what happens? Content, bro. Now yeah. you just make content without having to make content. Yeah, yeah. Right? Get Get the clips from... The host, or if they got a package, pay for the package. Yeah. It might be $300, $500 for you to get your file, some clips already, you know, done, prepared for you. Maybe if you got a commercial, they can put it in there. Maybe they got an email list, a text message list. They'll blast your, you know, your brand of business in front of them. Make that investment. Yeah. Again, people are afraid to invest in their business. Well, how are you going to get money if you don't invest money? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So buy the package. Then you don't got to edit it up, clip it up, and none of that. They'll just give you some assets. Now you can repost it. Yeah. Now your Instagram got content. Your TikTok got content. You do your your, your YouTube got content. Another thing is uh, reposting the long form, mm. right? So once this podcast is out, it's gonna be live on your platform. Yeah. I can now take that and repost it on my platform. It's kind of like watching your favorite movie on different channels, mm. right? So one of my favorite movies was growing up was Coming to America. They would that I mean that's basically syndication. Yeah. Right. It would one day it might be on this channel, it's on this channel, it's on Showtime, it's on HBO, it's on this, it's on that, right? Because the the, the content is redistributed, it, mm. right? So now other other platforms have the opportunity to introduce the content to their audience. Yeah. So are you saying like when this airs on my YouTube? you'll download the video and upload it as a video on your YouTube? Or what do you 100%. mean by – or is there, like, an easier way to syndicate that? No, that's what I would do. I mean, okay. if you give me the file, I'll just post it. Okay. But if I can't get the file, I thought there was a way I, I'll to just like download it. syndicate it, like how Instagram has yeah. the collaborator. Now, YouTube doesn't have that yet. That would be so good yeah, if they have Yeah, they that. don't have that yet. That'd so we'll see what changer. happens. Yeah. But at the very least, like, if, you, you know, if you're watching this, you've been on five podcasts, ten podcasts, or more – Go to the YouTube channels. Okay. You can download it. Yeah. You might need a plugin. There's a plugin called 4K Download. You you uh install that um that plugin to your, your Chrome browser, and now that will allow YouTube videos to be downloaded. Yeah. You can download that and then re-upload that, get a fresh thumbnail, and put that on your YouTube channel with a new playlist, like maybe podcasts I've been on or something mm, like that. That's that's smart. Because people may not Go to Trailblazer, the Trailblazer's yeah, yeah. YouTube channel. But they'll go to your channel. But they'll go to my channel. Yeah, then they'll yeah. discover you, and now yeah. they'll go watch more episodes from you. But now that podcast episode that we did, it's on two different channels. They have yeah. more life. Yeah. You know, it can be the the, the discoverability of that episode is, yeah. is, 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 is more broad. Man, that's so good. Like, you're breaking down how to take one form of content and get more exposure by just repurposing it. 100%. Like, people hear it about – or repurposing content has been pretty – like common from like Gary V in the past years, but like you're taking it to a different level. Like you're literally saying, take that YouTube, take that podcast and post it on your channel too. I honestly never seen other creators do that. Well, let me ask you a question, right? Cause you're a podcaster. I have this thing called the four P plan, right? So it's the podcast post promo plan. Mm. So when you put an episode out, what do you do once the episode's out? A uh, real story, um, email blast it text blast it and like i i think that's it okay yeah so those are good right so how do we even make it more i don't know how many clips you do but we, maybe we three to maybe uh, we'll not do, sorry, not three uh six to eight clips per, okay so per boom episode. maybe we'll do 10 clips yeah so that gives us an extra two yeah maybe make sure you probably already do it but make sure all your clips you make sure you collab with the person yeah. boom make sure uh, maybe something that we can do is now, now, now. When the episode is out, we can go live. Mm, maybe going we, live, okay. Right? Maybe we'll go live twice. We'll go live the day before. Does going we'll go live, live even work? Like oh, I know that yeah. it, it still works. Yeah, we can go live on Instagram. Oh, you are saying going live together? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can go live on Instagram. Okay. We can do a premiere. Sometimes, like if you got a really a really fire guest, you can you can include a premiere and then. You and the guest could do a live chat while people are watching the podcast. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So you mentioned email blast, text message blast. Maybe we'll do like a JV. So maybe I got something going on, you got something going on. We can we can also do something during that week. Maybe mm. it's a promo week, man. You know, maybe we're going live for the whole week. You know, um, maybe we have a giveaway. Mm. So basically, what I'm saying is, 
when you, when you release your podcast episode, this is for people watching. What's your four P plan? What what's your po- what, what's your podcast? I mean, what's your post podcast promo plan? What are the four to ten things that you do every time an episode comes out that's gonna give that episode as much reach as possible? And, and you're not just posting and hoping mm. that people find it. You, you know what I'm saying? Which Maybe I think you most pay, people do that. And that's what most people yeah. do. Maybe you pay somebody to react to the episode. Mm, you know that's what I'm saying? Smart. You know, like different, like different things. You know, yeah. May, maybe, maybe we make some independent content that's just driving people some excitement. So it's like, I don't know if you walk in the morning or if you got a dog or whatever you, you know, whatever got going on. But maybe it's like, all right, every every time I got a new episode, 48 hours before, I'm gonna make some, you know, some uh, some organic contact with the wife or with my son or with the dog. And we're just going to be talking about the new episode coming out, and then I'm gonna put that out on the story. I'm gonna mm. that's gonna be a post 40 hours before. It's like we can all do different things to to just get it more excitement on the episode. Mm. You, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. So things like that. So you don't just post the episode. You, yeah, you, you kind of build hype. Yeah, and you build and, and you grow and you grow it because yeah. maybe you, maybe you are just posting and hoping, and that's cool. But maybe you didn't do a story. Okay, yeah. well, I'm gonna add a story. Maybe you never do an email blast. Okay, I'm gonna add an email blast. Maybe you don't do a text message, but okay, boom, I can add that. So it's like now you're you're adding things to your rollout. It's like a rollout. Yeah, that's you know, smart. Now, now you got a rollout. You know, you can even do a a, a viewing party. You know, maybe yeah. it's a viewing party with family, friends. Yeah. But what if it's a viewing party? But then you're documenting the viewing yeah, party. Last time, last year, time yeah. this episode came out. Yeah. We packed the house. What's up, y'all? And people that's go dope. crazy. But yeah. you put that out, now it looks bigger than what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like all these different things that we can do because the content's not, once you put it out, it's not done. Yeah. And you can even go back, maybe, what what episode is this about? Um, I think the one that's recent on the page is 10, but then we're dropping, this will be 14. Okay, boom. Yeah. So let's say episode three yeah. was fire. We can go back to episode three. You You know, we learned some new stuff, right? So we can get more clips from episode three. We can make a, a segment or a couple segments for episode three. Repost those mm. because I never seen episode three. Maybe that's how I discover it in real time. Mm. You, you, you. So it's okay, like if I'm on episode fourteen, to still post previous episodes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Who 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 says it's not okay? Well, I mean, it's not like I'm following a rule, yeah. but I'm just trying to. In my mind, I'm trying to keep current with episodes, and only like what we post is current. Like that's what's in my mind. But think about it: who's it? Who's it not current for? That's you. Good. You're not viewing your own content. Dang. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, like for that's instance, good. like this week, we reposted. So obviously, we same thing current, but we also reposted some ep- some clips from a, a episode I did on CMOS. But it's new to the people who are seeing them right now because yeah. if you got new subs. And new followers, they ain't see the old stuff. Mm. So now they, they get to see okay. some classics. So how often are you repurposing old content? We, so again, we're just testing it out. Okay. So, I mean, I can't sit here and say, you know, we're doing it. This is the reason why we're doing it. This is the reason why we're not doing it. But I'm just like, okay, well, this podcast was pretty cool. Um, why don't we throw, you know, some clips in there? Then it's, because I've released so much content mm. every week. I got some slots. I can kind of throw some okay. stuff in. Okay, because I'm it. I'm doing six pieces of content daily gotcha. on Instagram, so I have certain slots that's going to be value, value, value. We'll call that. Do action. you have like a certain time when you post? Yeah, I got a certain time. Yeah, no, we normally do. If I if I can remember off the top of the head, we doing um, we doing six, nine, twelve, three, yeah, uh, six, and then ten. Damn, yeah, that's what the whole doing. day. Yeah, pretty much. And then you said overnight. Like, yeah. what's an overnight time? So the overnight you? overnight time is like ten to six a.m. Wow, and that's gonna be it's gonna be like a promo, a, a straight up ad um, for a digital product or and something. Do you delete it, or is that like yeah, a we story? Do, we archive it in the morning. Okay, yeah, I've I've seen people do that. Like I'll be at you know scrolling through Instagram at midnight, mm-hmm. and then people are just selling. I'm like, oh man, I've never seen this, and yeah. then in the morning it's gone. Yeah, so. yeah you and, and, and in some cases you can't even buy it in the morning. Yeah, like it'll just be that time. It might be, you know, a special price. It might just be. You can only get it that time. Yeah. Sometimes we switch it up, so it might be overnight post on Monday that's not the same as Tuesday, mm. not the same as Wednesday. So now people are like, missed it. Now they're looking for it. I can't find it. Damn. So I might get a message. You know oh. what I'm saying? But that allows people to wake up to some money. Yeah. You're sleeping. You got a $27 product. 
you know, on, on your Instagram. And you do you feel like at nighttime bells. people buy or, you know, they can yeah, burn man, a lot Yeah, man, people just be up, bro. I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. You know, like we were talking about, we talking about Home Shopping Network. You that's know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Dang, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, because the Home Shopping, like QVC, runs at night. Yeah, runs at night. That's How crazy. How many times you, I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, people buy knives. Yeah. They I mean, buy, you know what I'm saying? If you're only asking, how old are you? 43. Okay, so yeah, yeah you're, I'm turning 29, but like, I remember as a kid, like, if you want to buy something insane, like, mm -hmm. you wake up your parents at midnight, like, yo, could we get this? Those are the hours. Yeah, I remember yeah. those sock and boppers, and they came out. Like, yeah, we yeah. bought them from a TV ad mm -hmm. at midnight. That's what I'm trying to tell it's you. It's still relevant today. Because the social media is the new channels. That's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Instagram is a new channel. It's crazy to think about how patterns never change. Just the, just the platforms. That's wild because everybody's just trying to think of these new patterns, but you're saying like it's a new platform. But look, look what look what humans how humans buy for years. People are still watching content um, at nighttime, or or your night is somebody else's afternoon or day. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Are there any other patterns like from traditional mediums that are effective today still? That's a really great question. I feel like um, just giving. I think people don't give enough. Mm. And Alex Almosi talks about this as well. Gary Vee also talks about this as well. I think people aren't giving enough. So since they're not so they're not they're not um planting on good soil and giving their thing away and, and just giving value, you're not able to get it back. So What's I think, an example of good content that gives? Yeah. So good content that gives, if if I could be super frank, is like Basically, uh, in, in all honestly, like your secrets, you know what I'm saying? Because people aren't paying for the thing; they're paying for the implementation. Mm, that's a bar. So, whatever you sell, they can go to YouTube and get it, or Amazon to get it. Yeah. Like, but your branding, your personal brand, uh, your team's energy, they getting that from investing in you by paying for right. your thing. They are getting. Your version of that thing, yeah, you know. But there's there's so many different books. There's so many different people got Amazon stores. So many different people have microphones. There's nothing really new, bro. Yeah, like there's a competitor in every marketplace. Yeah, you might be fact. the first to market. That's a fact. But I mean, first to market is not always best to market. That's a fact. I know uh, you one know of my saying? mentors always goes. He wants to be the last because he wants to see what's see, done right, hundred percent, and then do that. Yeah, I mean, huh. Hundred percent, and that and that's really the thing. So, I would I would give more. Okay. If I was someone watching this that that you know might be stuck, I would definitely have an over, overnight post. I feel like that's easy to do, and th I think speed speed also. Um, you know, you have an idea, put it out. Mm. You know, because you have to see how it's received. If you don't see how it's received, you're holding on to it. You're always gonna be in that ready mode, and it's never gonna come out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't expect that it's going to be bad, so I'm not going to put it out. You need to put it out to see how the market perceives it so you can make adjustments. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have something that's not perfect. I can put it out, and I can make a, I, I, you know, I can make adjustments as clients are engaging with it, customers are engaging with it, than waiting for it to be perfect and then put it out and then just missing out on six months of opportunity to have it in the marketplace to make improvements. Yeah. You know, like, like even Pod Agency, the first time I put it out about a year ago, we made eighty eight hundred in a day first product, and it wasn't even out. I just put out the offer. Wow! But from then to about June, so let's say seven months, like it wasn't perfect. You know, like I got a lot of customers, I lost customers, but we made improvements. Like, yeah. oh, we need, you know, they need a week, they need a, a dashboard. They got to see where they are in the process. Okay, cool. I need to hire more booking assistants. Okay, cool. We need to negotiate prices more. Mm. Okay, cool. We need some solid, you know, they need more branding. Boom. They need a way to get clients. Like, these are all things that because I put it out, mm. I was able to see how to make improvements. Oh, here's some customer feedback. Okay, cool. Let me tighten this up. You know what I mean? It's like, it's all things like that. What about customer retention? Okay, cool. Goodwill. It's like, all the, those are the things. Oh, how can we, how can we take payment? How could we get more payment up front? Mm -hmm. you know, it's all, all, all things like that. But I was able to do that, and I'm still able to do that because I put it out. Yeah. So I can see yeah. the playing field a little yeah. bit more wide. Yeah. Then I thought, like, okay, it got to be perfect. And it's like I missed six, seven months of opportunity to put it out and just see how 
it could be better because yeah. it's out there. That's interesting. You know what I mean? And it's then interesting. And, and then obviously studying and seeing what, you know, the um, competitors in the marketplace are also yeah. doing. Yeah, man. I love I love everything you're saying. Like, me and uh, one of my guys here were just having this conversation this morning about, like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, just post and keep going. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. The stuff that's not perfect is the stuff that does well. That's crazy. To, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You put out something that you be like, oh, this is going to be good. Let me make it sure the editing's hits. great. <laughs> it doesn't you be getting no views or 100 <laughs> views or something. And then you done, they done see you make a mistake or, like, um, you know... Pronounce a, uh, pronounce a word wrong yeah. or something, and it gets crazy. Like I got a, I got an ad on right now. Talk, basically helping people, you know, with pot agency get more exposure. And like the way I say a word is wrong. I, I I'm surprised that I haven't gotten more comments on the way that I say this word because I realized it. But what I word just put is it, it out. I just I forget the word. <laughs> uh, I, I I'll share it with you later. Okay. Um, but it's running as an ad. Yeah. And it's getting it's getting leads. Like leads is coming in. Yeah. But like it's not my most perfect piece of content. Yeah. You know, but I'm like, man, I'm gonna just put this out. Yeah. But then I put it out in an ad set with like three other pieces of content. And those other ones that I thought was better didn't even didn't even do well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's interesting, man. I, I've I've noticed there's like one of my um friends has an ad run in. I'm like, bro, your belt is not buckled. Mm -hmm. He's like, I did that purposely so yeah, people yeah. can comment, bro, your belt isn't buckled. Hundred percent. That's yeah. It's a hook. Those yeah. are hooks. Yeah. That's crazy. To hear like an imperfect word is the reason why it's blowing up for you. Hundred percent, man. Yeah. That's yeah. so good. I mean, I, and that's really the name of my my uh my company is called Imperfect Action Media. Oh wow. You just gotta take action that's not imperfect. There was yeah. no action that we all took that was perfect. We just did an action. Think that's about a fact. think about when you were a baby. Yeah. You fell mad times before you even thought you could walk. Facts. You know? And you didn't stop trying. You just yeah. kept you know, babies just get up all the time and stumble and get back up. Yeah. You know, but as we get older, for some reason we we, we forget that or we lose a little bit of that. Yeah, no, that's so good, man. I mean, I'm really I'm really glad this episode is where it's at right now. I mean, there's so much value here. One of the questions I just thought of is like, okay, now someone's inspired to do a personal brand. Yeah. They understand the importance of it. They understand a little bit of strategy. What is it that you feel? Because going viral doesn't mean anything, in my opinion, or building a personal brand doesn't mean anything. Unless you have a call to action, hundred percent. Because like, man. Pe like, there's a lot of influencers that have hundreds of millions yeah. of followers, but they're broke, 100%. and they're like, "Why am I broke?" Well, the reason why you're broke is you have no call to action. Hundred percent. What do you feel? And I've asked this question to a few people, and I got different answers every single time. Yeah. But what do you feel is the best call to action to funnel all the attention to? Well, first, before I answer that, let me ask you this: Are we are are we can we provide value from the perspective of someone that sees that all these influencers don't have call to action and hella views? Or we or can we provide value and solution for the influencer that does have it? They continue to get the views, but they don't have a call to action. Like, which one are we doing? Let's do both if we can. Okay, cool. So if you're watching it right now and you you notice this blue ocean strategy, you know, maybe you maybe you have relationships with some of these influencers or celebrities that got audience, but they don't have a call to action. You be the one that partners with them. So you say, hey, listen, I hope you make a digital product or I hope you make a physical product or, you know, let's let's do this affiliate together or mm. whatever the case may be. I'll set it up for you. And all you do is you do what you're going to do, but then you mention, hey, click the link for such and such. Mm -hmm. hey, if you you know, if you're interested in this, text this number or whatever the case may be. You generate the lease for them, right? They have the platform, so they're going to give the call to action. You put it together and then y'all break bread. All they got to do is keep doing what they've been doing, mm -hmm. but now have a call to action back to, you know, whatever that product is, and then y'all just split the revenue. Okay. Now, if you are a celeb or influencer, someone that actually has an audience, you just make views and you're just surviving on YouTube money or hoping that, you know, TikTok fund and the Instagram fund is going to keep giving you money, mm -hmm. which is definitely going to run dry and they can control that. What you need to do is you need to get a product or a service. You need to have a digital product. Mm. You need you need to get uh, a service. Or worst case scenario, get an affiliate. Mm. Right? So the product's already done. So you don't got to sell nothing. You don't have to deliver nothing. You don't yeah. have to do no customer service. I think service. that might be the best thing for right? most people to do. Yeah, do an affiliate or partner yeah. with brands, right? Be You know, become an affiliate of those brands. Same thing. Your podcast, your content, whatever you have. You could keep doing that. 
But now you just have a simple call to action in the middle of it, or call to action at the end. You know, you stream or you go on live, call to action, right? You can even have an agency. Mm. You be the one that has certain, you know, you can create the products for these creators. They do what they do. You got these different partnerships with them. Yeah. You're able to split revenue, maybe yeah. 50% here, whatever the case may be. So now you have uh, money coming in from this guy, you know, uh, this girl, this team, and you're able to help them get more revenue outside what they currently have going on or bring them money or opportunities from the gate. Yeah. That they wouldn't have even thought of, or maybe they're afraid to, or maybe they're just so like used to what they're already doing, they don't see the opportunity, mm -hmm. so they don't, so they don't do it. Yeah, I, in my opinion, I think twenty twenty four, all artists, like if you're a musician, you need a digital product and you need a community. Yeah, I think that's the gold right there is a digital product and a community 100%. because if you build it right, like it's scalable, it's super scalable. But I think what's important is. People need to have intention to actually scale it because a lot of people create a digital product or community and forget that, hey, you need to actually put attention to this. Yeah, no. Because that's going to happen all the time. Like people launch something, they make yeah. a whole bunch of money, and then they stop building it. Or the, or it's just a shiny, what, 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 what they call it, uh, shiny object syndrome? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's hot right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so many people, like a friend of mine, maybe like a month ago. He dropped a book. Super excited about the book drop. Yeah. Post for one week. That's it. And then crickets. He stopped talking about this book. Yeah. He's on to the next thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Guess what? The book ain't dead. Yeah. Keep That's working it. Keep working it. People want results so fast that yeah. they they stop putting the work in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's good. That's good that you say that because I, I wrote an ebook like 2020, end of 2020, beginning 2021, and I sold it. But then I said, you know, I'm going to repurpose it. And I dropped it as a free book on Apple and then mm -hmm. hit or on Amazon and then hit number one. And then I, I'm making a, a second version of it and selling it. Mm. And it's, it's pretty much like the same book, just like repurposed a few different times. Yeah. You, basically, so with that book, right? With that book, you can have the, the physical version. Yeah. The ebook, the audio book, a video book. You, a could do video a, book. you could do a training. You know <laughs> I've never saying? heard of a video book. Yeah, video, so a video book would be like you. Yeah. There's a couple different ways you could do it. You, you, so it could be like you summarizing each chapter the way that you would talk. Hey, what's oh, up, wow. y'all? So listen, chapter one, I'm going to keep it really brief. Chapter one is where I discover my myself. You know, I spent five years with an alcohol problem. So chapter one, I really looked at myself in the mirror. I said, yo, this is it. You know, I called one of my best friends. I was like, yo, bro, I need you to hold me accountable. 30 days sober. Let's go. I'm going to see you guys on chapter two. Discover wow. what day day one was like. You summarize each chapter, right? But it's you. Or you could hire an actor to do it. Yeah. Right? Or you could hire... Um, can you some, use AI to do it? That, that's the next thing I was going to say. Or you can or you can use AI to do the voice and or the visuals. Wow. Right? You could do that. You could turn it into... Um, uh, account. Uh, I was gonna say a calendar. Um, uh, it depends on a book. It could be, uh, like cards. You can do cards. Like if it's like a, a, a book that you're giving a lot of fire quotes, you can turn those quotes into Dang. cards. Bro, you like the repurpose king, man. Listen, <laughs> listen. You could do it. The con, cause the con, the thing about this, the content is not old. Yeah. It's just it's old to us. That's a bar. But it ain't old to people. Like, there's a book called Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. It was written, like, a long time ago. What, but 1800s like, or something? Yeah, people are still, like, finding it about today. Right That's... now, yeah. Someone's, someone's always going to be 18, bro. That's a bomb. In 21, in 25. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, it's crazy just to think about. Like, it, like, resets. Like, the like you could be really big. Like, for example, if you have sold a million books today. You could still sell another million books. To the same age group five years later. 100%. That's crazy. Yeah, it's like we have to believe in our product. The problem is people want quick results. Yeah. So it's like what we think isn't happening fast enough. So then we stop it. We move on to something else that doesn't move fast yeah, enough either. I, my feelings are hurt right there. You know what I'm saying? So let's bring <laughs> the book back. Anything about you? Hey, man, my feelings are hurt, bro. With the book, you could combine the book with the new book and make yeah. a bundle. Or you could take the old book and introduce a workbook. Okay. So now they can use the old book more efficiently. Dang. You know what I'm saying? You could okay. turn that into a journal. This is mad things you could do. Dang, bro. I got a I got a journal right now. I'm I'm about to um put together one of my old books. Like I did this one 
maybe 20, what's it, 2024, basically. So I did this one in May 2022. Okay. And it's already on version two. Like, I already made improved it, but I'm going to make another version, turn it into a workbook. So now you got a workbook and a journal, wow. the digital or the physical. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Dang, that's so good. That's crazy to think about because so many entrepreneurs, myself included, mm. we're always thinking about, like, what could we create new? You're like... Well, if you haven't exhausted repurposing what's in the past, like start there. Like that's what you're you know, saying. You know who does this on a high level? Who does? We it? all know this, bro. Nike. Dang, that's true, bro. They, like oh, the shoes you're wearing, those those pandas are repurposed. Yeah, these came out hella years ago. <laughs> yeah. It, how many colorways is in these? Hella colorways. A lot. They got the highs, the mids, the yeah, lows. Yeah, the silhouette hasn't changed. And I mean, they what? they changed it a little bit. There's mm -hmm. a few but, tweaks. Yeah, yeah. They, they're gonna they're gonna make, maybe they'll use like. The modern technology. Yeah. Maybe it's not going to be the original cushioning. It's going to be the upgraded version of the original cushioning. You know what I'm saying? New technology on the sole. Yeah. But it's essentially the same shoe. Yeah. Right? And even deeper than that, sometimes Nike will take this sole and put it on another silhouette. Yeah, and call it a whole call different Call it a whole shoe. different That's shoe. You know what I'm saying? How many? How, the first time we seen the elephant print was on the Jordans. Facts. But the elephant print has been on different styles of Nike since then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even... even even think about the Cactus Jacks. Like every time Travis Scott, Travis Scott drops a new Nike, it's not a new shoe. It's just a different colorway. It's a different colorway of a repurpose of an old shoe that was popular. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? They just kind of remix it. They even drop the Jordan 1 reimagines and they just change the words. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's the same shoe. You know, sometimes it's different colorway. Sometimes yeah. the Nike check might be. How many times have Air Force Ones dropped? Bro. You know what I'm saying? And like, bro, all I'm saying is. We ideate and we create. Yeah. We can just push it out further. But we have to also align it with the goal. So how... Okay. This is good, by the way. I appreciate you. How often should someone create something new then? If you're saying what you've created is still good, yeah. how often should you be creating something that pushes the status quo forward? I don't think that you should honestly create, 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 okay. create, create. If you are... A business owner, okay. you might just need to make what you have better okay. and focus on exposure. If you're an artist, you may want to drop an album at least every year. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, nowadays you might have to drop it every quarter because of the way that music is digested. Yeah, music is a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. Yeah. But as a musician, you could be in control because you, there's, a, there's a whole digital side that you could tap in. Facts. You can go on your own tours. So you could work a project. Yeah. Like, Drake just dropped two albums back-to-back. -back. He had the joint with 21 Savage, right? That album, Her Loss, yeah. which was, like, last year. But there's year. something I want to touch on that you just yeah. brought up Drake, because I think not so many artists know this, but most of Drake's hits, I'm talking hits, are repurposed songs. Mm. They're not. They're they're literally repurposed songs from artists back in the day. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I think the re... This whole podcast. Kanye just did that with um with with, with yeah, the Backstreet tied, Boys. Yeah, yeah. It's repurposed. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's it's yeah. repurposed. It's a so, formula. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a formula. That is. It's Nicki literally, Minaj just did it with, with some song. That's she right. Got, um, she did. Yeah. yeah she and same thing with like Saweetie and all these other like big artists that kind of came out the blue. Mm -hmm. They took like two short song. From the early 2000s, yeah. and now it's like blowing up in today's Tory, generation. Tory Lanez did that. Um, two with uh, shout out to Tory Lanez, bro. I yeah, miss him, bro. Shout he, out to Tory, he man. made fire music, bro. bro. I miss Tory, yo. I, yo, hopefully, he can get out soon. He's one of my top five artists yeah. for a show. I had a, so I like him because he always pushed the bar, he did different stuff. He rapped and he sang, you know what I'm saying? He yeah. performed. He's probably one of the biggest artists that was doing live streams during the pandemic. That's he had a fact. The and he did the NFT drop, and he had and did the NFT yeah. drop, which is so. That's kind of like what I talk about for artists, but it's like they, they're not even paying. He gave you a blueprint. Facts. You know what I'm saying? He gave you a blueprint. Um, but anyway, shout out to him. But what I'm saying is like these artists, they can be in, they can be more more in control. So like kind of like what you said as far as like how much can, you know, they could create. I feel like, I, like as an artist, you shouldn't drop projects. I would just drop singles. Mm. And, you know, like if you're an old artist, well, not old, but mature, like a veteran is different. Like people want a Chris Brown project. Facts. We want a Drake project. Facts. Right? But if you're new, I would just drop singles or three or four songs together. See how they do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got one. If you got one song that goes crazy, you can go on a tour. Facts. Because you can do your one song plus two or three new songs. Yeah. 
you straight. Yeah. Have your merch, cool. But have your digital product, have your community where they could come to you, listen to music before it drops, so you can introduce them to new videos before they drop. Yeah. Or you can sell your tickets to them before you go to a city. Like, I would be in control of all of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't need a label. You just got to build an audience. Yeah. And then we go on the Trailblazers podcast and talk about my new album or my new song that's coming out. Yeah. So I can let your audience know what, you know, what I have going on. And that's how you start getting more of an audience. Yeah. Bro, you, you literally gave a blueprint for massive exposure in this podcast, man. Yo, that's what the tour is all about, bro. You know what I'm saying? Audience Growth Tour 2024. I feel honored, man, because this I'm content going to 12 so cities, good. One city a month. You know, I'm showing entrepreneurs in real time, and I'm going to teach them How are you ways. doing the tour? Like, is it, like, seminar style? Or yeah, like... so so that's a great question. So, basically, it, yeah, it's, it's like a workshop seminar style, one day, uh, four to six hours. I'm bringing my friends. So, I got I got friends in these different cities, so I'm going to collab with them, give them my platform so they can teach what they got going on. And then I'm going to share different podcast monetization, but then also digital marketing and exposure strategies. And then the second day... Is gonna be a live podcast. So let's wow. say let's say we did the Trailblazers podcast live in front of an audience. Yeah, that's dope. Right. So that's like the VIP. And then um, in some seats, I'm gonna test a third day, which is gonna be like a VIP day, which is gonna be we're gonna help shoot and create your content for you, and then give you like a commercial for your parking service. That's sick. Yeah. So that's one dope. city a month. So it's very manageable. You know, what I'm saying like this uh, next month, January or this month, depending on if this releases or whatever, we're in Miami. The next month we're in Atlanta, so Atlanta in February. Atlanta in what February. What date? Um, it's it's the fourth week of every month, so it's gonna be. I think it's probably gonna be like the twenty seventh or twenty eighth. Man, my birthday's on the twentieth. Pull up. We come to Vegas too. Yeah, well, in Atlanta, I have one of my business partners out there, and you're talking about. We kind of talked about well, not. We kind of talked yeah. about, but you said earlier you doing mergers and acquisitions. I've been doing that. In fact, the guy I'm partnered with is mm. in Atlanta, so maybe. Uh, I come out. Come there, on, dude. talk about it, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, um, and that's a whole nother topic. Maybe it that's is. A that's a whole different episode. podcast, but bro. Like, that's a whole entrepreneurs. You don't have to always build something and start Facts. something. You could, you could, you could acquire a business already moving that already has employees, already has systems and processes. Yeah. And maybe they don't have what you can bring, or maybe that business owner is looking yeah. to get out of it, and then you can acquire it or acquire a portion of the equity, and you can help that business grow, yeah. make more revenue. And you just acquire yeah. cash, or work. you could just flip it. And or you could flip just it. like people flip houses. Yep. Like you could flip businesses twenty four seven. And that's what that's, I'm on right now. Yeah, we got to talk about learning. that, man. That's what I'm learning right now. Yeah, all the time. We got we got definitely talk about that because I have, I've I flipped about fifteen businesses last year. I'm in so. the right place. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because that's all I want to do. Twenty twenty four, bro. That's fast money. People talk about high ticket mm-hmm. sales, bro. You flip one business. You flip a business for a mill, you'll get 10% of that. That's what, 100 well, grand. That's what I want to do in 2024 because, like, I, like one of the things that I've been even sharing with, like, I call it, like, my brain trust. He's, like, people that I, like, give my, you know, not give my ideas to, but bounce ideas yeah. back and forth with. Um, I'm, like, we got to take the deep shots and you got to take the close shots. Facts. Like, you need to make your layups, but you also got to look at this half-court shot or this yeah. three-pointer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you want the bombs, but we also want the, you know, we want the, you know, we want the coins too. Facts. You know what I mean? So, like, plays like government contracting, plays like mergers and acquisitions, you know, even, um, you know, certain investments, depending on where, you know, where platforms they are. These are plays that simultaneously, even some, you know, real estate as well. These are plays simultaneously where you can you can get 50, 100, yeah. quarter of a million yeah. in one move why are you still collecting yeah. five hundred thousand? That could fund like everything that else. Could fund that everything doing. else. Yeah. yeah, and even with get and even getting your credit in a good position. Yeah, you, so you can access capital. Now yeah. you can make bigger moves. At, at, and I think at, all of this is something every entrepreneur needs to think about. Yeah. Even if you're currently building the niche that you're in, you need to be financially scalable. Hundred percent. And when I say that, you know, it's your credit. Mm. It's the high ticket stuff that you're in. Every entrepreneur needs to be a high ticket closer, 100%, yeah, 100%. in everything that you do because, like, it just makes sense. And and uh, this this whole different podcast, but yeah. I think it's important just to kind of drop here. Yeah, we talk about that on my show. Oh yeah, Remember, for you sure. Just no, we could definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. do that. And I want to say this because this whole podcast we learned about personal branding and content. And sometimes if you're not bringing in income, mm-hmm. it's so hard. To do personal content. Yeah. It just is. So I feel that people need to 
diversify their cash flow. But think about this too, because I really like what you said. Uh, sometimes when people you know don't have it, it might be hard for them to to yeah. do the personal brand, personal content. But think about this: it might just be what how they feel, how mm. how you and I may feel, because we can have an idea right now from this podcast, put our offer out today or tomorrow, right. and get some revenue. It didn't cost us anything. That happens all the time. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So people have to remember the money isn't in you getting paid per se. That's it's in the fact. ideas that you can yeah. create. Because you can create an idea right now yeah. and get some money today or yeah. tomorrow or this week. Or I just want to kind of like pause you real quick because everyone that's listening, like what Brandon just said is a fact. You don't need experience to make money. You don't need degrees. You don't even need the right connections. Like, if you think about whatever it is you want to do, it could happen quickly. Like, ser- like I just lost my Instagram account, and, like, one post I did today, I had two followers come from it, and one of them already became a client. Yeah. And, bro, my my Instagram is, like, 24 hours old. But, but you know what most people say to you? Man, you got a new – you want to just give up on it, bro. You lost all your followers. Yeah. Don't even do it. Yeah. Or, you know what, damn, bro, you only got 10 followers. If you was in a room with 10 people – would you not feel like that was valuable and you could talk about your products and services and what you do? Of course you would. Of course. But when it comes to the digital platform, yeah. social, people just, they always be like, oh, I don't want to be on a podcast with 50 people with 50 views. Yeah. You're missing out on the opportunity. Yeah. It's not about the view count. It's about what you're bringing. Facts. If that one person or two people can relate or yeah. can connect with you, you can do a sale, right? Yeah. You can plant a seed, right? You can make You can make and generate some revenue. So you have to show up and your brilliance, every single uh, opportunity that you yeah. have, and and give it out to the world. Man, I love that. You know? I love that. And we are getting to the tail ends of the podcast. And, like, what you just said was so good. And, like, normally I ask, like, and, and maybe this is a different answer for you, mm. but, like, normally what I ask is if your whole existence was completely eliminated, and God forbid that happening, knock on wood, but if that were to happen – and you, all you have left in this world is a piece of paper with one line that's framed in the Hall of Heroes for the rest of eternity. What would that paper say? Man, that's a really good question. You know what I'm saying? If I only had one thing in the Hall of Heroes, it would probably be something like, how, how may I serve you? Wow. Because if I put that out there and people can actually engage with that, I'm going to get feedback. Yeah. Because somebody might, somebody might say, I need this. Somebody might say, I need that. Someone might be like, I need that. Some people might be like, damn, this is the only kind gesture wow. that is there. You know what I'm saying? That's so gonna, I'm going to generate some data. Yeah. Now I'm going to know how I can serve the most people. Yeah. Because let's say 50 people responded with this, 20 people responded with that, one person responded with that. So I'm going to know how I can serve people that are reading this how message. How may I serve you? With yeah. yeah. So how may I serve you? That's a bar, man. Yeah. And that also like gives me the, the idea of like, if someone were to read that, like, man, like, this person's asking how they could serve me. I need to start asking that to more people. Yeah. So it's like a ripple effect. I mean, yo, just imagine if you're single right now, if you went up to a girl um, that you don't know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And that was part of like your, your, your opening line. So, I mean, I know, you know, just kind of, I don't mean to interrupt you, but like, let me, let me just ask you something. How can I serve you? She'll be like, what? Huh? Huh? But you'll start, you'll start that interaction. You know yeah. what I'm saying? She'll be caught off guard. She'll be like, "What?" She like, "What do you mean?" Or he'll be like, "What do you mean?" But it starts the conversation. Yeah. You know, be like, I, "You know, I just seen you over there, and I don't know what you got going on today. But how can I, how can I serve you today? Yeah. Like a message? You like people are gonna give you real information, yeah. and then you'll know what to really do with that information. Yeah, that's good, man. Bro, this podcast is so interesting. Yeah. I had no idea we were gonna talk about the things that we talked about, but. It's so good. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to rewatch this a few times and take some notes. Like, I took a few notes, but, like, there's yeah. so much wisdom here. And, you know, I didn't ask you this before, and I want to ask you this now. Like, how and, – and it doesn't have to be a long answer, but, mm. like, how did you become the person you are today? Man, that's a really good question, man. Um, I've been through a lot, man. I lost my mom, dad, grandmoms, one of my brothers. Um my dad, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so my, my immediate family, all before I was 16, I seen a lot of death, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just letting y'all know that what you've been through doesn't define you, mm. you know what I'm saying? So that's 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 just where I, can't, where I come from. Sure. Now, after, you know, um, I kind of gone through that stuff, you know, I failed at businesses, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have mentorships. I didn't have discipline. 
I didn't have the desire to be more. I wasn't in an environment where the thought that I could be more mm. was even a reality. I had to have self-talk with myself and really decide, you know, what I wanted for me and then start putting myself around different people, physically move to a different right. city, spend money, invest in myself, getting the programs, you know, like, uh, you know, start some stuff to see if it works for me, you know, like, you know, quit basketball and start running and do things hard, you know what I'm saying, and, and kind of test where I'm at. Like, I had to do all these things. I still do these things. You know, before I got here, woke up, I walked, went to the gym, did my 300 push-ups, did my meditation, read my books. I did mm -hmm. all that before I got here. So it's like... Discipline. Yeah, and then how I perceive myself. Like, one of my boys was telling me yesterday, like, he, he's been a multimillionaire. He's someone that's been on TV, movies, and everything. And I remember... Uh, couple years ago he he would always tell me to think more and, and be bigger and like at that time when we had these conversations i thought that i was thinking more and being bigger right but i realized that i wasn't like he'd yeah. be like man you want that man get the get get the best one yeah like i'd be like oh i want i want the the little bmw like nah bro get the big bmw yeah. like you know what i'm saying so even if it's not what i wanted the idea that i should be thinking about that yeah and then after a while, like, hit me. I started investing in bigger programs. Yeah. Like, the coaching program I'm in right now is like $150,000. Damn. You know what I'm saying? But, like, the fact that I can make that type of investment. Yeah. Or I can be in, with different, you know, or, like, that I could drive a Rolls or yeah. that I can own a Lambo or that I can make 3 to $5 million in a year or more, whatever the case may be. These are the things that didn't even, that I wasn't even, you know, I didn't fathom. But it's like you have to be in these environments so you can want more. Yeah. And it's and it's it's literally like let's say a rose. They say a rose can't grow from concrete. That I mean, that's not a parable, that's real. You can't yeah. put a rose, you can't grow a rose in concrete. What does that mean? That rose would be in a bad environment. Mm -hmm. The rose needs to be in an environment where roses can grow. Facts. Right? So you might be watching it looking or you might be watching this or listening to this right now, and you're just in a bad environment. You're in, there's nothing wrong with you, you know, but maybe it's the people you're around, yeah, the music you're listening to. Uh, the the books you're not reading, mm. you know what I'm saying? The YouTube content that you decide to watch, you know what I'm saying? The trash TV that you are watching, mm -hmm. the pornography that you're consuming, mm -hmm. you know, the bad relationship that you just want to stay in because of comfortability, mm. you know what I'm saying? That's preventing you from being how God designed you. That's a bar, You know man. what I'm saying? And you just need to shift. It might be physically move. Yeah. Maybe you don't have the money to physically move, but you can spend I time in a library. I can attest to that. You know that what I'm saying? definitely... Mm -hmm definitely works because i'm not from vegas yeah. but m moving outside your hometown it's like taking like it's like one of those sayings where you could put a, a baby great uh great white shark in a fish tank mm. and it won't grow bigger than the fish tank won't grow bigger than you the put fish that tank. joint in the ocean yeah 20 foot shark there you go it is it, it, we we all listen man if God designed us in his image that means he designed us to be God he mm. designed us to be heavenly he designed us to be you know what I'm saying? High level creators. Yeah, facts. So if you don't see yourself that way, you're not flogged. You're just in a bad environment or yeah. you have people around you that can only think a certain way. Yeah. So you need to get from around those people so you can think bigger. And maybe you can come back and save those yeah. people or help those people, pour yeah. back into those people. Your environment is everything. It's There's everything. also like another, I'm big like internet memes, mm. but like there's another meme on the internet where it's like a dusty, broken Lamborghini, right? And the father gives it to oh, his yeah, daughter. Yeah, that and the good. daughter's yeah, yeah. like, what am I supposed to do with this? Mm -hmm. This is a broken car. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, go try to sell it at a pawn shop. Go try to sell it mm -hmm. here, there, there. And it, he's like, go try to sell it to like a, a, a Lambo club. So she goes to the pawn shop, and the pawn shop owner's like, this car's not worth anything. Yeah, I'll yeah, give yeah, you 10000 yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, okay. She goes to the dealership, and the dealership's like, it's not worth anything. i will give you 15000 for it. And then she takes it to a Lamborghini club. Yeah, the car club, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the car club. And the guy's like, I'll give you a million for Joint's it. Joint's rare. Yeah. yeah, yeah all and, that. It, and it, the point of it's like your environment, like um, your environment creates your value. 100%. Yeah, you, ha you have to get, because you can only be, you're only going to go as far as people in your environment. And people in your environment are always going to see you how they see you. Yeah. They're never going to see you bigger because yeah. they don't see themselves bigger. Well, so good. You man. know what I'm saying? But you can go somewhere else, and not that not 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 saying you can just be who you want to be, because I'm not saying go somewhere and like be lost. Mm -hmm. I'm saying go somewhere and like discover who you are. Give yourself the opportunity to grow without any intangibles holding you back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That that that's what I'm saying. Bro, and that's how you end this podcast. That's how we end the podcast, bro.
Man, I'm so grateful to meet you, man, and to have this part of the second season. And this podcast was so good, bro. Yeah, listen, I have to apologize. I was a little bit late, you know what I'm saying? I could have left a little earlier. I had no idea everybody yeah. from L.A. was coming. I know. To the tra- holiday, hey, it's all saying? good, man. The traffic is the traffic. Yeah, but yeah. we did it. You showed up. You killed it. Yep. And uh, for everyone that's tapped in, that's been tapped in with this podcast, give Brendan a follow. This guy is changing the game in so many different areas. And I always say this, when you're in proximity of greatness, like you become greater. And people like Brendan, people that I interview here, I'm not just interviewing people just to interview people. I interview people who I genuinely feel are trailblazers. And I just want to give Brendan a shout out because, man, I've learned so much in this podcast. And I could only imagine how much I could learn if I digest more of your content. Mm. So I just want to, you know, shameless plug, like, yo, follow I'm him. Le- I'm about to learn from you, yeah. bro. You got the mergers and acquisitions. You did 15 last year. Yeah. I'm working on my first one. Hey, man, I'm going to give you some game. Hey, we go. could probably do some deals, too. I would cause... love that, man. I want to. I already put on my board, I want to do at least three Okay. 2024. You got to think bigger, bro. There we go. We doing 10. Look, because last year, I was just... So I'm big on e-commerce, and I know yeah. this is the end of the podcast, but like I help people with e-commerce and blah, blah, blah. One of my clients is like, hey, I want to sell my store. I just post on Facebook, hey, this is what my client does. This is what she's asking for. Well, I had no idea anyone's going to be like, yo, let me buy that. Or they'll be like, hey, I actually... Uh, have buyers for other stuff or have sellers and that just turned from one conversation mm-hmm. to a whole bunch of conversations yeah. and the next thing you know i flipped 15 stores that's what, listen it's crazy that's how that happens all about, bro. yeah next year mergers and acquisitions well i won't say next year right now mergers yeah. and acquisitions and yeah. government contract those okay. are my those are the two things i'm i'm focused on for sure man yeah. Anybody, and obviously helping you guys get more yeah. exposure 100 you know percent 100 percent and if anyone that wants to buy and sell like you contact me contact him but like all your plugs will be right under here. So if mm-hmm. you want more exposure, you need help with getting on people's podcasts, you know, you want to be around greatness, follow Brandon right underneath this podcast, whether it's on YouTube or Spotify, or wherever. And also, too, if this is the first time you're listening to Trailblazers Talk, give us a subscribe because there's going to be way more episodes just like this coming every week. We are committed to it. And Brandon, man, I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, you as well, bro. Boom. Make sure you guys tap into the podcast. Like I said, like you know, like like you saying, subscribe, share, send it to like five people so they can discover the uh the podcast as hey, well. Let's go. We'll see you guys on another episode.